All right, let's get going. Hey, hi, uh, welcome to session CON 323. And I'm Raj Lakshmi Ramasubramanian, uh, senior software engineer currently working on ECS Service Connect. And, and my name is Alex Maraz. I'm a product manager with AWS. And today we are going to take you on a hopefully exciting journey through this inter-service communication. And before we get started, I really want to ask the question, why? Why do we talk today about connecting services? Well, the answer is that, well, as a product manager, I talk to customers all the time, and over and over again, I hear the same story from customers like you, that connecting services reliably is not trivial. Sometimes it's really hard to get your applications to communicate really in a reliable way. So let's take a look at why, why this is hard. So when we use containers, we usually use a lot of microservices. We create microservices, and guess what? The number of microservices keeps growing. They proliferate. And with that growth, the complexity of communication between your microservices grows exponentially. Imagine you're adding one additional service, but maybe you are adding 20 more connections between existing services and this new one. So that is really growing real fast and can get out of control real soon. We also have multiple stages, multiple versions of the same application that coexist together, and we need to take that into consideration. And of course, all that is deployed on dynamically scaling infrastructure. We scale up and down with traffic. We always try to, be, to have the most optimal solutions. But at the same time, when something is scaling up and down, it's actually hard to connect to these things that, well, may not exist already, or maybe you just get a bunch of new ECS tasks but no one, your applications don't know about them. So add to that one additional component of complexity. This is health. We do remove unhealthy tasks and healthy endpoints from routing, but it takes some time for your applications to learn about the health state, reason about it, and not really talk to things that are not healthy. So all that together, creates a really, well, non-trivial problem to solve. And let's take a look at how we solve this problem today. In AWS, specifically with Amazon ECS, I would love to highlight three major ways of interconnecting services that, that, that we basically built and with that uh, our customers use today. Amazon ECS service discovery, Elastic Load Balancing, and AWS App Mesh. I will briefly touch each one of these points. So, let's start with ECS Service Discovery. It's a blissfully simple service, blissfully simple thing to use. You create your ECS service, you give it a friendly name, DNS name, your applications call the DNS name to connect to your services, your tasks directly. Amazon ECS hides a lot of complexity from you. So what it actually does, it orchestrates registration of endpoints into AWS Cloud Map, which is a service registry and discovery solution for AWS. And Cloud Map in its own turn registers that stuff into root 53 DNS and keeps it always up to date so your applications can connect to healthy endpoints. So with that, you get a really simple DNS-based discovery. Your clients, your client applications, connect directly to your backends. So there is no intermediary in between. And in general, you have fewer components in your system. But with that, we also have some downsides. Well, since all these communications are direct, we don't really have a nice way to give you traffic telemetry. You have to come up with solutions related to metrics and logging by, by yourself. So basically, you have to build your application code. 
to reasonably use ECS service discovery. And of course, DNS is uh, rather limited in terms of smart discovery capabilities. So it just gives you simple round robin discovery. Nonetheless, it's a very easy way to get started with Amazon ECS. It's an excellent way to have direct communications between your tasks. Moving to elastic load balancing. A lot of our customers use elastic load balancers today. I would say it's the most frequently used way of interconnecting services on an AWS. And it's beautiful. It gives you a way to abstract away all this complexity. You just put a load balancer in front of your ECS service, your client applications call the load balancer, and it does its magic. Again, Amazon ECS is really taking care of all the complexity of registering your tasks as targets to your load balancers and removing them when they go down. All that complexity is pretty much removed from you. You make a call to load balancer and you're good. You're getting rich traffic metrics with that. You get a lot of additional features from load balancers like DDoS protection, it's amazing. You have a lot of great stuff, but for communication inside your VPC, all this huge feature set, very powerful feature set, may be an overkill. Like you realistically don't need DDoS protection inside your VPC, but you get with uh, load balancers. And you have this additional infrastructure to reason about, you have this additional uh, things to control, to, to manage. And you also need to think about this additional latency that load balancers add to your applications. If your applications are really sensitive to latency, well, direct communication tends to be better. Even though this latency is minimal, it is there. There is yet another thing, another box that accepts connections and passes them through, so you can't get away from that. Well, to solve that problem, we actually have yet another way of interconnecting services, AWS App Mesh. It's a managed service mesh solution for AWS customers. And it's more complex than two previous solutions. Uh, how it actually works, we place an open source Envoy proxy right next to your workloads, right next to your tasks as sidecars. And we configure these proxies to, well, do really smart things, like collect metrics on your behalf. You don't need to think about metrics. We're just coming from, from your tasks directly, from, from these Envoy proxies. You have really fine-grained traffic controls with, with AWS App Mesh. You can enable encryption and authentication, but that all flexibility comes with complexity. And that complexity lies in managing and reasoning about all these different components and reasoning about configuring these Envoy things that, that we have on, on, on your tasks. It's probably the most flexible way of connecting your services, but at the most complex. And as a product manager for, for App Mesh, I hear a lot of feedback from customers like you on, on complexity. So, we asked ourselves, wouldn't it be really nice to have a combination of really simple service discovery? The same way as you use ECS service discovery with rich load balancing and traffic metrics that you're getting from load balancers and with traffic resilience that you get with AWS App Mesh. All in one package. Simple, rich, reliable. So we build a solution that we hope addresses all these topics. The name of the solution is Amazon ECS Service Connect. So, how it works? We try to keep it real simple. When you define your application, you just specify which endpoints will be open to, to traffic. 
Then when you deploy your service, you give friendly names to these endpoints. Your clients connect to these friendly names, same way as in ECS service discovery. But now you're getting rich metrics and connectivity between your services is way more reliable. I will touch on that a little bit later. So at a very high level, Amazon ECS Service Connect is really an evolution of service discovery. You get the same simple naming schema, you get the same simple discovery mechanism, but now it's reinforced with reliable service-to-service -service communication with a lot of good things like automatic retries for failures, automatic network level uh, health checking. You get rich traffics, out, uh, traffic metrics right out of the box in your ECS console and in CloudWatch. And with that solution, you get more safe and more robust native Amazon ECS deployments than ever. Let's take a brief look at all these details. Uh, so starting with the discovery. And honestly, that's the same thing. This is basically a slide from uh, CS Service Discovery uh, launch deck. That's how it works. You give your services a name, your services are organized in namespaces. And then your clients use a combination of service name or namespace to connect to dependencies. What's actually important here is to know that now your namespace can span across multiple Amazon EC clusters. With that, you can really have your front-end service running in one cluster, your back-end service running in another cluster. You, give them, you put them in the same namespace, now they can talk to each other freely. When we talk about reliable service-to-service -service connectivity, we really talk about combination of a couple of things. First, an additional layer of traffic level health checking. We're actually doing something that is called um, outlier detection. We detect problems with your services when, well, with specific tasks when they misbehave and return, for example, 5xx errors. And we take them out of traffic routing for a while. And please know that works in combination with existing Amazon ECS Docker health checking. So Docker health checking really it keeps working on, on the task level. This is a network level uh, thing that we are doing on top of it. So we, we can stop routing traffic to unhealthy endpoints real quick. And more than that, we can automatically retry failed calls. So your client application never see errors. So that all happens fully automatically. You make a call, task is returning 503, we retry it. And it hits another healthy task, your application never sees that problem. And it works for TCP, HTTP1, HTTP2, and gRPC connections. The next point that I wanted to make is about rich traffic telemetry. You get new, really cool dashboards right in your ECS console. So now if you need to debug your applications, you have a way to understand what's going on right away without going to yet another console. You see it right in the ECS console. You get telemetry for TCP, HTTP, and gRPC. And of course, you can these traffic metrics are sent to CloudWatch. You can export them to any solution that you use for collecting metrics. That's not going away, of course. And you can also send logs to your preferred Amazon ECS log provider. So getting metrics and logs all together from that solution. And finally, my final point that I wanted really to <laughs> bring home is the support for deployments. We really make them more robust. So with Amazon ECS Service Connect, you can achieve zero downtime deployments. Uh, we do support connection draining. We also support this health checking that really makes it easy for your applications 
to get connected to a healthy endpoint and when something is getting uh, replaced on deployment, your traffic simply doesn't go there. And of course, connection draining helps you to, well, not to take down tasks that have clients connected to them. These deployments also tend to be faster than the native deployments with Amazon ECS3 Discovery. You will see an improvement there as well. Well, I did talk a lot, and now I want to give an opportunity to Rajal to talk about all the deta details, how it, how it is built, how it, how it really works under the hood. Thanks, Alex. So let's talk about you know, uh, how it really works, right? Because uh, Alex talked about a like, lot of things, a uh, lot of cool things, uh, saying that like, we will provide a simple discovery, we'll provide rich metrics, we'll provide a reliable connection, connectivity, and all of that. So how are we able to like, you know, guarantee all of these, and how it really works is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, so let's begin with what we mean by simple discovery of Amazon ECS services and how we are able to achieve it in Service Connect. So as usual, I'm going to show you like how you are going to like create a service. So as a customer, you will first start by creating an Amazon ECS service. Now, how do I actually want to enable Service Connect? And is that like really just a small blob as we really talk about, or is that like really a, a huge configuration that we um, need to uh, go and configure? What we are going to show is that like, all it takes to enable Service Connect for an existing or a new ECS service is just this blob. So um, what you are really showing here is like one, you are enabling a Service Connect configuration, and then you, second, you are specifying the namespace, the namespace here refers to the cloud map namespace that you want to connect. So the very fact that uh, you are registering your service to this particular namespace means that all the other services in that namespace will be able to talk to this service. And this service will also be able to like, talk to the other services in the same namespace. And you will have multiple containers working as part of your task definition. Uh, and each container can have like multiple ports, you have the flexibility to define one, which are all the ports and which are all the containers that you want to expose to be discovered by other services in the namespace. So one, you specify a port name. Port name is something that is actually introduced as part of the service connect. This is um, a unique identifier for a port that you will specify in the task definition. So you refer that port in that service, and you will specify the discovery name here. The discovery name is again the uh, one, the cloud map discovery name, and it also means that the clients in the service connect service namespace will be able to talk to this service using the discovery name. So in this case, the clients will be able to talk to, let's say, backend.myapp.local, and that's all. Um, there is nothing more that is needed. So any connections that is sent to backend.myapp.local will be actually talking to this particular service. And optionally, you also see one more thing here, which is like client alias. Um, so the reason we actually added client alias is, one, you can actually provide an even friendlier name than like a discovery dot namespace. And you can also use it for you know, a migration scenario where you have an existing service that is actually talking to a different service using a, a kind of a different name. And you want to like migrate that to a service connect service. You do not want to go and change your client in order to go and upgrade your service to service connect. You can specify the client alias in, in terms of what the existing clients talk to this service and they will still be able to discover using the same method of the DNS name. And the port here refers to the actual port which the client connects to. So if you are specifying a client alias as I have here, so you will be able to talk to this service just by using the client alias DNS name. So backend port 8080, they will be able to talk to that service. Note that this port can be different from what the actual port that the container is running in. So if I create 
a service connect service with this set of configuration, what really happens? So you create, uh, you send this request to Amazon ECS service. You have an instance. Uh, it can be a Fargate task as well as an ECS on EC2. So ECS will configure the ECS agent that is running on your instance and to uh, the ECS agent will start a task on that instance. And let's go into the details of like what really happens in the task and what are all the things that are provisioned as part of like service connect task. One thing that I actually want to call out even before we go into all of the details is that you do not need to worry about what is actually going and configured in that service connect task. All that we are actually, I'm, all that I'm actually explaining is for you to understand what is going on behind the scenes so that you will be able to connect and understand how things work. But you really do not need to go and worry about like what is actually behind the service connect task. All you can think about is just regular ECS task that is running. So first, when you are actually starting an ECS task that is enabled with Service Connect, you will see a Service Connect agent that is actually starting right when the task begins. And let's go, let's talk about like what the Service Connect agent is. But uh, after the Service Connect agent becomes healthy, you will see that all the containers that you have configured will all start coming up as uh, you have configured. If I really look into like what is inside that service connect agent, there are two real components. One, there's an Envoy, and Envoy is an open source CNCF approved project as some of you may have known. And the other is an additional agent that we are running as part of the service connect agent. What is this agent responsible for? One, it is responsible for ensuring the health of the Envoy and making sure that it is always up and running. The other thing that the agent is responsible for is to collect and aggregate the metrics that the Envoy provides and pushes that to CloudWatch every 60 seconds. So you will be able to get all the rich telemetry information that enables you to understand what is really going on with your task with that set of rich metrics. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you really do not need to worry about what is, how the Service Connect agent works. All that we are calling out is what is going on behind the scenes. So you, we, you really just need to focus on how to build your containers and just configure the Service Connect services and we, on the behind, we will be able to configure the Service Connect agent. So if you see, the Amazon ECS is responsible for, one, configuring the Service Connect agent uh, in terms of like all uh, the re resilient and all the other um, features that we talked about earlier. And the other thing that it also does is Amazon ECS is responsible for fetching the existing services in the namespace um, and their endpoints from cloud map and directly sends that to the service connect agent so that you do not need to do anything else apart from enabling whatever the small blob that we talked about earlier. And once this task is up and running, then the ECS is again responsible for registering this task into the cloud map so that like other services in the namespace is able to know or discover about this new task that is coming up. So again, um, what we really are going to project is like how the Service Connect agent is helping us provide all the features that we really want to call out in the Service Connect. Now let's see what really happens when you are sending a request with ECS Service Connect. So you are having two different services here, uh, a front-end service and a back-end service. 
a simple example. And um, the front end is uh, all the requests sent from uh, load balancer is actually hitting the front end and assume that like in order to serve the request, uh, the front end talks to the back end service, fetch something and then return the response. So you have a load balancer that is already configured to talk to the front end service and the front end service is also directly configured to talk to back end service. So when a client sends a request, load balancer sends the request to the port where the front end service is running. We have configured such that any request sent to the service connect services are redirected to the service connect agent. So the when the request is sent to like say the 8080, the front end is running in 8080, so it is automatically forwarded to the service connect agent behind the scenes. The service connect agent then forwards that request to the actual application and in this case, the front end talks to back end in order to serve this request. So the front end sends the request to the back end. Here it is actually sending to back end colon 8080. Back end is also running in 8080. Let's assume that. So what we have done is any request that is sent to the other service connect services on the same namespace or configured to be redirected to the service connect agent. So the request that is sent to backend, backend in this case is an existing service connect service. So that request is forwarded to the service connect agent automatically behind the scenes. And the service connect agent knows about all the endpoints of the backend. So it load balances the request across all the known endpoints and picks an endpoint based on the load balancing strategy and it forwards that request to a particular IP or the task uh, IP that is running. And when, again, even given the backend service is a service connect service, any request that is sent to the backend service, though that request will be forwarded to the service connect agent automatically and the service connect agent will forward that request to the container. And then the response will just flow in the reverse direction and it will be like served as such. Now, let's talk about what we really mean by reliable service to service connectivity. Let's talk about a couple of use cases and then see how we are able to guarantee the reliable connections. One, again, I'm just using the same examples, front end and back end. And then a back end, in this case, I'm assuming that it has four tasks and the front end is trying to talk to the back end. So what happens when one of the tasks becomes unhealthy all of a sudden? There could be multiple reasons, net issues or other issues. What would happen really? So in this case, the last task is becoming unhealthy, but the front end service is not aware of the unhealthiness yet. So this endpoint is actually becoming unreachable. So the service connect for some reason is picking up that particular uh, endpoint and that sending the request to the task, which is actually not up. What happens in that case? It will see that the task is, the IP is actually like unreachable or it is not uh, able to connect to that endpoint and the service connect agent will automatically retry that request to a different endpoint. Note that as a front end service, you will never see this failed request. This is automatically happening behind the scenes so that the service connect agent is able to reroute the request to a different, possibly a healthy endpoint, and front end service will only see the response returned by the healthy service. So you will not see any failures at all from your application when, because of 
the service connect agent that we have configured. Let's take a different scenario. You have, again, front end and a back end service. The back end has four tasks, and I have assumed one task in this that is actually have, having some misbehavior, like it is having uh, some issues, and whenever any requests are sent to it, it is just returning like simple, like five x x errors. What, what does happen when we try to send requests to those endpoints, like what will really happen? So again, a front end is sending a request, and then the service state agent uh, is trying to talk to that uh, misbehaving task, let's call it that way. And so the service connect agent will see that this task is actually returning some uh, 5xx error code, and it, it will note it down. And then it will actually, uh, like if you are sending like a lot of requests, and if it notes that this endpoint is always returning a failure error code, then it will temporarily reject or remove that endpoint from the list of known healthy endpoints so that it will reroute that request to the other known healthy endpoints. So again, this all happens behind the scenes. So you will never uh, know that this endpoint is actually being like not considered or like removed temporarily from the list of all tasks that you are talking to. So the front end service will observe some 5xx errors, but they will be restricted because they will be able, like that endpoint will be um, rejected after um, the, a repeated set of failures so that like you will see a reduced number of uh, failures. Okay, let's talk about what we really mean by robust deployment because um, we want, I mean, every change that we make, we have to do a lot of deployments and we really want deployments to be robust so that any clients shouldn't be affected by the deployments that your service is making. So what we really mean by that? So assume that you are uh, doing a deployment for a backend service, and then the front-end service is trying to hit the backend at a very uh, high TPS, so it is actually sending requests continuously. Let's assume that scenario. What really happens? So you have new set of tasks that are coming up. You also have like old set of tasks that are going away or getting deprovisioned. So what happens during deprovisioning is that when you have configured that service to be a service connect task, we stop accepting any new connections when the deprovisioning starts. So any request that is sent to the uh, deprovisioned task will no longer accept any new connections, but all the connections that you have already accepted by the task. If it needs, like say, backend service needs to talk to one another service in order to uh, serve the existing request that has already been in, prog in progress. So those requests will be honored. Any new connections will not be accepted. So when the front end service sends a request uh, to the back end, and even if that task is in the, in a, is in the deprovisioning stage, so the task will not accept that connection, so the service connect agent will automatically reroute that request to a different endpoint. So from the front end service, you will not observe any failures though the requests were sent to a task that is getting deprovisioned. So you, this is what we really mean by like robust deployments. And when the other tasks 
uh, or the new deployments is completely up and running and the Service Connect agent discovers about those endpoints, it will start redirecting the route uh, traffic to the newer set of endpoints. Now, we talked a lot. So let's, talk a, let's take a quick demo uh, of like how really Service Connect works and let's see what's, what's in action. So for this, I have actually assumed, uh, I've taken an application, it's an ELB application, an open source uh, application that um, lets you vote on your favorite uh, restaurants. So it is very simple app. Um, there are four different services. So there is a UI service, there is an app server, uh, the UI talks to the app server, and then the app server actually stores the data in two different databases. One is a, a Postgres database, and then there is a Redis cache. And then there is a load balancer in the front, which is sending the request to the UI service, and then the rest uh, of the flow happens. Let's see what really happens. Um, have you pressed? Yes. Okay. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed, it's a live demo. <laughs> so, for this purpose, I have, as, I have taken two different clusters, a UI cluster and the storage cluster. The storage cluster, I have the DB and the Redis cache that I talked about, and then the UI is uh, consist of the UI component as well as the app server component. And I'll, I'll quickly show you. So the UI has the UI and the app server, and the storage has the DB and the Redis. I'm gonna show you how to, this is an existing service, but this is uh, not enabled service, we haven't enabled service connect. So I'm gonna show you how to enable service connect and what really happens when we enable them. So I have a, a DB service, let's start with that. And I'm going to edit the service, turn on service connect. And I'm going to mark this as a client and server because I want the other services in the service connect namespace that I'm going to talk about uh, to discover this service. So it is a server because it is exposing some services to, for the other services in the namespace to discover itself. So I'm going to mark this as a client and server. I choose a namespace. In this case, I have already configured the cluster with a, a default namespace, and that's why it's automatically coming. But if you can always override the namespace that you want. So in this, I've chosen an ELB namespace. The ELB namespace is, uh, corresponds to the cloud map namespace. Either you can choose an existing cloud map namespace or you can configure a namespace as part of creating cluster and ECS does create the namespace, cloud map namespace on behalf of you. So you do not need to worry about like switching screens between cloud map and ECS and do multiple things. You can do everything with just what is provided within the ECS. So in this case, I've, I'm choosing ELB namespace, and I'm con going to configure the service that is going to expose. So I have only one port that is exposed, so I choose the port, and I specify the discovery name. The discovery name is one, the name that gets registered in the cloud map, and also the name that the clients can talk to. I optionally specify the DNS name here and the port. And that's all. There's nothing more that's needed. And when I click on update, it automatically starts up a deployment. So it, you can see that there is a new task that's coming up with the service connect and Okay, uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna show you like one more time. Maybe let's do it for Redis service. So 
So I'm quickly going to see what's the port. Redis is exposing 6379. So Redis, I'm enabling the service connect. I'm marking this as a client and server. I choose the namespace. Because I'm using the same namespace, all the services within that namespace will be able to discover the other services. And I specify the service that is being exposed here. And 6379. That's it. And if I repeat this setup for like four, two more services, I just have an existing setup um, in a different region with just the same thing. Uh, UI and a storage. I don't want you to all watch me do this one. Um, so I have enabled Service Connect for those four different services. Let us take a quick look at like what really happens, right? So we talked about uh, DB service, and then if I go into the task, let's take a quick look at the task. You will see two different containers here. One is the help DB that you have configured as part of the task definition. The other one is the service connect uh, container that we injected as part of you enabling service connect. This, you really didn't do anything other than specifying the service name and the namespace that you want to configure in. Everything else is coming from behind the scenes. So this service connect container is going to use the resources from your overall task member, like whatever task that you have provisioned. So you will have to factor in like uh, some additional resources. Um, we'll talk about like how much we will, you will really need, but um, you, whatever resources that are present from your task those will be used up by the Service Connect agent that's running. And I have all the other services that is deployed here. And I quickly go into the load balancer endpoint. Other than me enabling Service Connect, nothing else that I did, just when I hit the load balancer endpoint, it automatically comes up with nothing else that's needed. So it's a voting app. So as I mentioned, I'm just going to generate some traffic here so we can see what's happening. And if I go into the UI service, you can see that there is a new tab that is introduced, which is health and metrics. This is introduced as part of Service Connect. One, you will see the resources utilization of that uh, service. The other thing that you will see when you enable Service Connect is the traffic health that we talked about. So you will see both incoming and outgoing traffic health. So incoming, you will see the number of uh, active connections, the number of requests that your service is receiving. And in case of gRPC, you will also see the gRPC request count. And on the outgoing, you will see one, like what are all the different response codes written by your dependent services, and like what are, how many number of requests that you have sent to your dependent services, and you will also see the response time it took uh, to return from your dependencies and the processed bytes. So with this information, if anything at all is going wrong with your dependence service calls, you will be able to like quickly identify one, where it is going wrong and how much, like what is the problem? Because all this information is all split by the target. So you will see the response codes by target. So in this case, the UI is just talking to the app server. So you are just able to like see one metric here, but if your application is talking to like multiple different dependencies, you will be able to see 
the information split by different dependencies. So this really helps you to understand what really happens with your application and able to identify what is the issue, if at all there is any. With that, I'm going to hand it over back to Alex to talk about the next set of things. Thank you, Rachel. So I hope you, you pretty much saw how much complexity we're hiding from you in, with ECS Service Connect. You get a very simple way to configure and connect your dependencies. You get metrics, you get reliable connectivity, and Amazon ECS is taking care of a lot of sophisticated things completely, completely hidden from you. So the things that we are doing, we're giving you a way to reliably connect to your services. Solving one of the top customer asks for Amazon ECS to enable this reliable communication. And we do it all without additional infrastructure. So now, let's talk about, yeah, let's skip the pre can demo. Let's talk about pricing and availability. And I do have some good news for you. Service discovery and connectivity capabilities that we deliver with Amazon ECS Service Connector free. The metrics that you're getting in your uh, Amazon ECS console and in CloudWatch are also free. You, you would have to pay for the resources that you use when you run this additional Service Connect agent. Our recommendation is to add about 256 0.5 vCPU uh, and 64 megabytes of memory for, for that Service Connect uh, container. That should be enough for pretty much most of the use cases. Again, it's not something that you can figure separately, just account it when you do your task allocation. And the question would be, can I still run my 0.25 vCPU tasks? The answer is yes, as you've seen in our demo, uh, if your applications have a very small uh, load, like you don't expect uh, hundreds and thousands of TPS hitting your applications, you can go with 0 0.25, 0 .25, uh, size for your entire task, because that uh, Service Connect agent at idle consumes, I would say, about 0 0.1 vCPU. So Service Connect is available today in 22 AWS regions, and you should expect us to be in all regions where you have Amazon ECS available to you. You can start using it today. You have access to console, AWS SDK and CLI are available, CloudFormation and CDK are out with support for Service Connect. We also will release AWS Copilot that supports Service Connect real soon. And we're working with our partners with Terraform and the amazing community of open source contributors to bring uh, Service Connect support to HashiCorp Terraform as well. And finally, I want to conclude this session uh, with a couple of additional resources that may help you uh, learn more about Service Connect, how it works. First of all, tomorrow at 3.15 uh, p.m. we have a workshop session, CON 303. I do believe that uh, it's all booked, but 25% of uh, spots are walk-in, so please feel free to stop by if you don't have it on your calendar. Uh, you will have an opportunity to do a hands-on with Service Connect. Uh, we will be there, and we will have a really interesting uh, way of building your applications and migrating your existing applications to Service Connect. We do have an AWS news blog. Please feel free to read it. It walks through well all these details. Uh, great, great presentation, great uh, clear description of what to expect. And yes, definitely try it out today.